Big smile. Doesn't look like you've been around a lot of gun violence, but what do I know? So your first instinct is? No, she ain't been shot. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Introduce yourself. My name is Raymond. My name is V. My name is Britt. I am a business operations manager for a tech company. Today you're gonna guess who's been shot. Okay. I've been shot multiple times. I used to be a gang member. I think I should kind of be a pro on this, but who knows, we'll see. Do you have familiarity with guns? Yes, I'm pretty familiar. My family's military on both sides. I started shooting for the first time when I was like 15 years old. I know a lot about guns. I know a lot about the violence that it comes, what comes with it. I come from like the poor neighborhoods of Chicago. I've been in three school shootings. How old were you when you changed your life around? 26 is when I made the, the biggest change. Had a kid, after that it was over. How much of that is, is still with you? All of it, I just, I, I just deal with it every day. Therapy, um, doing good, coming and talking about it like this, I think it's important. You ready? I'm ready. I'm Britt. Jackson. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I'm going to say, yes, Jackson has been shot before. Right um, off the bat. <laughs> what was that, five seconds? If somebody stepped up to you, getting in your face, would you walk away or would you handle um, it? Me being an adult now, Try to think hard about my decisions. And um, when you were younger, what would you have done? Oh, absolutely, socked him the fuck out. Socked him the fuck out. Have you seen guns next to cocaine? Have you seen yes. guns next to weed? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. I feel like maybe you know how to turn the dollars over when we bring back the uh, the eight balls. No tea, no shade. Mm. I think you have been shot. I think you have been shot because in your youth you would have just hit somebody. And now you think about what you're doing. So I think maybe you got into some altercation and somebody popped you. Have you been shot? Yeah. Yes, okay, got one right. What happened? There's a huge drug culture in Seattle and so I was, you know, I got into it. At a point started selling all of it, basically to feed my coke habit. I was going to buy a gun from someone because I was really starting to push. Mm -hmm. But he had smoked some heroin earlier in the day and he was messing with his little hammerless 38 and it went off and went through my car seat into me. So it was actually an accident. It was, it was uh, an accident, but it wasn't an accident. Yeah, it was a super hard lesson, but like I was on a path for jail or death. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like detract from your experience, but I did call it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have a lot of friends with that same zipper. It almost hit my liver, but it didn't because it went through the car seat first. And if it had hit my liver, I would not be talking to you. Yep. My brother. That was some grace and mercy. I'm sorry. That it, was, look. It, did you stop selling? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. It definitely put me way back on a better life path. When I got shot, I did the opposite because it was like a mark of respect. You, you know what's that. interesting is like the first time I was like healed up enough to go to a party again, like these popular girls who never talked to me were like, hi Jason. <laughs> you've been, oh my god. You've been through it. It's crazy, right? <laughs> that people thought you were cooler corny. because you've corny. been shot. Corny. Yeah. I'm glad you're here, brother. What's me your name? Me too. Jackson. Jackson. God bless you, bro. Hey. For sure. The car seat. That's how my cousin got hit. This shit is it's like, it's bringing stuff up a little bit, but I'm okay. I'm okay. What is your stance on gun violence and like gun control? I'm definitely an advocate for women owning weapons. Absolutely, same, same. Fourth of July, are you just chilling on the Fourth of July? I'm eating. You're not tripping off the loud fireworks and stuff? No. Do you go to therapy? I go to therapy weekly. Absolutely, me too. We all need therapy. Period. Let's just get that out, out the way. Yeah. But as black folk, it's not the thing. So did something traumatic happen to you or something like that? So something traumatic did happen. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say you ain't been shot. Okay. She's not scared of loud noises. Am I correct? You are correct. Oh, just... I've been around gun violence and I've actually treated people who are victims of gun violence. Oh, wow. I come from a medical background. I'm a bartender now, so I used to be a uh, medic. Someone was murdered outside of my job that I still currently work at. Wow. And I That's had crazy. to work on him, doing it without the correct supplies. This was the first person that I worked on that actually passed away. With everything that happened, is it difficult for you to go back into work or? It's hard. 
I think about him a lot and kind of what his family has to go through, mm -hmm. so. Well, you did all that you could. Yeah. It's yeah. not your fault. Yeah. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be sweaty. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. You look like somebody like from where I grew up. You know, you just hold yourself like that. He you holds himself strong. You got on a lot of blue, though. Sometimes, you know, different gangs got different colors that they wear, that they represent. Do you have any affiliation with gang? Red's my favorite color, man. I, I don't affiliate with anybody. No colors. No colors, no, no nothing? No nothing. Hmm. Hmm. Do you remind me of my uncles? I'm going to say yes. Yeah, is that an old joke? No. <laughs> it's actually a very astute assessment. Yeah, you remind me of my uncles for real, real, so. <laughs> do you go to therapy? I do not go to therapy. If anything I need to talk to, I talk about my, to my family. Absolutely. Therapy isn't for everybody. I do understand, I do understand that. But um, have you had to go to your family about something traumatic that has happened in your life? I, mean, I go back and talk to my mom about her beating my butt back then. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to really go to some therapy if I need to. I think that, <laughs> that is a good idea. I mean, it's okay, to, it's okay to do. You grew up in a good, bad neighborhood? I grew up in one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in Seattle. <laughs> Uh, Beacon Hill, Washington. Have you ever had any long hospital stays? When I had my teeth pulled. <laughs> you had your teeth pulled. <laughs> I don't do any drugs or pills, so I was like, give me Tylenol. I was crying like a baby. Oh, man. <laughs> like, so you never taken <laughs> pain pills I don't. in your life? I, like, really? Tylenol, yeah, but any, any of that other hard stuff, I don't do. That's awesome. You were very prominent about not doing drugs and pills. and So, yeah, I don't think you've been shot. I do not think you have been shot. You said you don't know nothing about no gang. Am I right? No, you're not. Not at all. So yeah, I've been shot. I haven't been affiliated with gangs, but I have hustled the streets. I got shot in my face. It's not a, that's not a damn. Damn, I knew it was a damn bullet hole. Shit. <laughs> I got a big homie with a bullet in his face. Like, that's why I was like, hey, you hold yourself like me. You got the scar, but I'm here to assume and I did not assume. I got shot from selling drugs and it was a friend that robbed me and shot me over an ounce of weed. A close friend or just close so you thought it was? Been around my family, been around my daughters, been around stuff like that, so. That happened, I, we had like a hood meeting and one of the friends came and lit everybody up, dude. Did it change the way you make friends or anything like that? I don't trust many people. Yeah. I don't yep. like people behind me. Nope. Oh, this is my kids and they're kind of shady too, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not gonna tell you to go to therapy, but. It helps. Nowadays, and you a beautiful yeah. black man, and black men deserve to grow old. We deserve to be taken care of. So I like. So, can I? I gotta go. Yes, please give like, me a hug. <laughs> please, hug like black man. Best. I need all that. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Doing well. I mean, you're wearing like crochet. I, <laughs> it's like, have you ever been shot before? It's like, mm. Big smile. Doesn't look like you've been around a lot of gun violence, <laughs> but what do I know? Did you grow up in a bad neighborhood? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever been in the hospital for a long time? Nope. Do you have any pain? Nope. No, she ain't been shot. <laughs> I don't think that you have been shot. I do not think that you've been shot before. I have been shot. I was shot in a school shooting at my high school. What um, the fuck? Um, yeah. What was the circumstance? Somebody just come in or am I? I yeah, okay there was a kid that was a year older than me and he came in with an AR-15 and a handgun and killed a young gentleman and then turned and shot three of my friends. He uh, was fully set on killing as many children as he could is what he said in his statement. So he fired bullets until he ran out of ammo and oh, we all like, tried to run, obviously. And then the janitor tackled him down. I didn't know I was shot until I got down in the classroom and I looked down and I saw blood and then I was like, oh my God. Fortunately, his AR-15 did jam, so he didn't get to use that gun. So wow. it could have been lots worse, but yeah. it doesn't so mean it wasn't handgun. terrible. I mean, yeah. yeah. So what happened with your community? Did they adapt to being more strict on gun violence? I'd say my community is still all about guns, yeah. which is really tough because I literally got shot at school. Right. So right. I understand like the need for guns for self-defense, but there doesn't need to be AR-15s right. and AK-47s out there. Yeah, that's so. unnecessary. Does it affect you? Like 
Yeah. Mentally. Yeah. Every time that I like know that there's a gun around. Makes you uncomfortable. Oh, so uncomfortable. I get so anxious. Loud noises, things like that. Yeah. Does that bug yeah. you? Yeah, Cars backfiring, balloons popping. Yeah, upset. Multiple of those things have caused panic attacks. Yeah, I'm sorry you went through that. Nobody should Thank go through you. that. May I ask how old you are? It was when I was 14. I'm 19 now, so it's been about five years. Yeah, Jesus, that is... Whew, that was a little rough, no tea, no shade. I just been around it so much as a kid and seeing it still going on, and I'm 32. I think that's crazy. Anyway, I agree. you are a survivor. I'm glad you're here. Me too, <laughs> for sure, thank for you sure. very much. <laughs> nice to meet you, take care nice now. Nice to meet you. All right, I need some water after that. Woof, woof, woof. Hearing about a school shooting compared to like gangs feels totally different because we chose to be around that. We know what we're getting into, but that is like, they're just at school, man. Hi. I mean, just looking at your eyes, you're... <laughs> I feel like you're trying to hide something from me. <laughs> you look nice. Thank you. I don't scream being shot when I first see you. I could have went to college with you. You just seem like somebody that's got their life together and is staying out the way. Do you go to therapy? I used to. So when you stopped going, you thought you got over it or was it? Um, I stopped going since I started looking into more like spirituality. Yes, I like that. Have you dated like bad boys or? I definitely had my fair share of dating bad yeah. boys. So like, <laughs> I just feel like a man got you in trouble. Yes, you've been shot before. I don't think you've been shot, but I do think that you have experienced gun violence in some kind of way. Spot on. What happened? Um, so when I was in college, I used to work at this coffee donut shop. But one day this lady came in during like a really rush hour kind of thing. She asked if I can use the bathroom. She said, I don't want to make the mess out here. And I'm like, you got to take the key and get, like, just go, you know? Wow. So it turns out that she actually assembled a shotgun in the bathroom. I felt the shotgun go off. Mm -hmm. I felt it in my feet burst. Right. And I knock, knock, didn't open the door. My back grabbed extra key. Opened the door and I found her dead on the ground with like blood all over her face. Oh, and I, my the Jesus. shotgun and her like her shoe was off, you know, because she pulled the trigger with, with her, her toe. toe or something. Yeah, because, wait a minute. We yeah. gotta go back. <laughs> it's crazy. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. She said she didn't want to make a mess. Yeah, like now when I look her. back at it, she was probably talking about like she's the one that like, killed everywhere. herself in front of us. Or, like, oh my you Jesus. Know? Yeah, it was really a lot to bear, you know, like, but I was really lucky to had a good team that took care of me after for months oh, and good. months, yeah. That's good, and I'm glad you're figuring it out and yeah. taking your own path with this. For sure. I do appreciate yeah. that. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whew, I'm gonna get some more water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Such sweet eyes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. You don't give me, like, violent background. Did you grow up in a bad neighborhood? Yeah, you could say that. Did you do any, like, gang-related activities? I was just playing football and basketball. Okay, I know these guys. I know these guys. <laughs> they just doing their thing. They won't be left alone. <laughs> you know, you're probably one of those cats. How was your, like, high school, middle school? Every grade was a little bit different. Okay. So, like, through fifth grade, it was all private school. Oh, okay. Private school, got a soft voice, standing up straight. I don't think you've been shot. I don't think that you've been shot. I don't think you've been shot. You stayed out the way, you played sports. Am I right? No, no, you're wrong. <laughs> well, you've been shot? Yeah, I've been oh, shot. Oh, damn. Yeah, it was actually recently. Recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just on the bus last year. Some guy was drunk and high, jumped up, slapped me. I tell him he needed to back up, and then he spit on me. Mm. I'm like, you're a bitch. Right. And that's when he pulled his gun out, and I'm pissed, so I'm like, Fuck you, yeah. <laughs> you're still a bitch. I don't care, you have a gun. And so that's when he tilted it to the side. And I was like, ah, of course. So he shot one time, cut my arm, but he shot four more times after that. And did anybody gun, else get hit? No, it was yeah. still like 20 people on the bus though. So he could have killed somebody else. And if yeah. he had to hit my arm, it would have killed the guy next to me. Were you injured from the shooting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, oh, damn. Oh, oh. So, so I had to have uh, two surgeries. Damn. Like, this is is your bones busted? Yeah, so it shattered my whole front bone. It's damn. still in my arm. Yeah, it'll, it's right it'll come out eventually. My yeah. friend got shot in the exactly. chest and his popped out after time. Yeah. <laughs> Get well, brother. No more wolfing on busters. <laughs> what was this experience like for you? I liked it. Um, I enjoyed it. I don't talk about my situation much. I have friends that I've had for over 30 years and they find out I got shot and they'd be like, what the fuck? I didn't know this. I never really felt I need to. I don't like to bring it up because I don't want people to look at me like I'm a victim. 
What do people get wrong about your experience? I genuinely think people just assume that I'm gonna have intense trauma from it. It's not in control of me. I'm not like, this is, that's my life now. I'm the dude that was shot. I think people kind of just downplay um, my emotions. There's like the strong black woman stereotype. Like even when I was crying, people knew that I was still gonna go to work and finish. And I don't know what about that is. It's like you still have to get your job done. Don't get me wrong, it is part of the lifestyle. Drugs, all that stuff, guns, it's part of the dangers of lifestyle. And the stereotype of that is, is that fact that you deserve it. Mm. We know that's a dangerous life, but you don't, still don't deserve to die yeah. from it. What was the recovery process like for you? Lengthy. I'm missing three feet of my small intestine. I don't have a gallbladder anymore. I had an ileostomy bag for a while. If this happened like 20 years ago, I would have had it forever. But shout out medical advances. <laughs> <laughs> I can shit normally. The bullet bounced around. It broke my neck, the C5 vertebrae, it broke my neck. It went out the side of my neck right here. It's a small exit hole. And I was telling myself, you know, get up and walk. But I couldn't. Like, my brain was saying do it, but my body was not responding. But I didn't know until the medics had gotten there that that bullet had broken my neck and it uh, temporarily paralyzed me. They were going through my wallet and they were like, oh, you know, they found out my name. They put out a picture of my daughter and they put the picture of my daughter in my hand. Oh. And so, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Like, um, you know, I think about that shit, that, it bothers me because, uh, like, what if I had bring, what if I had been stupid enough to bring my daughter with me, you know? Um, my bone was so fragile at some point, if anything happened, then we would just snap back in half. Just now it got to a good point where I can start being able to hold my son properly. We're driving, you know, like give me the ambulance, we're driving to the hospital and, <laughs> and they're, you know, they try to keep you awake and alert. And then all of a sudden I hear them say, oh shit, we were losing him, we're losing him. And they're like, keep your eyes open, keep your eyes open. And then uh, like, I don't remember shit after that. So they said I actually died um, on the way to the hospital. So. Um, wow. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you but, uh, sharing. I was super lucky, um, the bullet didn't, hit any of my major arteries or my ovaries or my hip bone. It was the emotional problems that stuck with me though. I think the what if moment scared me the most and really kept me up at night. In my heart, I thought like, you know, I wanna save her, I wanna be able to help her. But the worst part is, I didn't even know if she was actually dead or if she was just like, you know, her chest was obviously blasted. I was scared to go back, like what if she shot me? Like what if she was still alive and she shot me? So. This lingering like guilt that I had, that like, what if I could have saved her? I think that's been like the hardest part. Did surviving it move you away from a life that potentially could have <laughs> killed you, or do you not think about it that way? Nah, um, it didn't because uh, that's not what you think about. You eventually try to go straight, but you can't. Um, but it didn't make me change my ways for a long time, man. I started drinking heavy, doing a lot of cocaine powder, um, self-medicating. But I guess when I was talking to the um, interviewers earlier and I said I've never been to therapy, I guess that was my therapy, was the medication. But it, does, it didn't medicate you because then you gotta come down off that shit and you gotta start to face reality again. It took me a long time to recover from that. And so like, I'm, just, I just, I'm, I'm two years sober um, from alcohol uh, now, but I haven't, I, I'm over three or four years sober from any um, cocaine or powder or anything like that. But it takes this large fucking toll on you. Did your thoughts on guns change after you were shot? It just reassured me that I need to self-carry to protect. My thoughts on guns changed completely. Uh, since I went to that high school that was really Republican and pro-guns, after the shooting when everyone was still pro-guns, it kind of it kind of confused me. I was like, wait, but I just like we all just got shot at, at school, and now you're still all great about this. What needs to change? I don't think there's any reason any person should own an AR-15, an AK-47, any semi-automatic gun. Background checks, waiting periods, and um, maybe individuals that started to care. I feel like there's a lot of people in the United States that send their thoughts and prayers when that doesn't do anything. <laughs>
I was going to school on a random Wednesday when I got shot, and that could be anybody. How was this experience, Britt? I feel heavy, but I also feel very privileged that everyone here is here with us and able to share their stories today. It's cool to see people, people change and evolve as they, as they go through life, but also to hear like the trauma some of them face is, is, is you know, heart-wrenching. It was challenging, but it was very humbling to hear everybody's story because I feel like I haven't talked to anybody about that part of my life, honestly, when I think about it. I come from an environment where gun violence was very potent. I've been in three school shootings. I've had family members murdered by guns. I've had family members get put in because of guns, you know? So I've, I've seen it on every scale, every side, and just seeing it consistently happen, I just know that, like, we gotta do better. We, we need to do better. I'm just thankful for y'all. That's all. That's it.